Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead. Boom. Explosions go crazy. The backdrop changes and and the dancing people go dancing behind us. Hi. Hi. We're from the Big Family Homestead. We live in Wisconsin. Yeah. So how is everybody this afternoon on this chilly gray day? How you doing, baby? Fantastic. Baby. Because it's actually not that cold out. 27. Nah, yeah, pshaw. it's not. We've gotten so used to the cold that it pshaw. doesn't really matter. And anything below, I don't know, below 10 is just, just darn cold. And then. Well, it's supposed to get really cold coming up yeah. here. We're By the way, if you don't know, we're in central Wisconsin. Yeah. Right at the base of what do they call the, the North, North Woods. Woods? Yeah. So if you remember watching Little House on the Prairie and they're talking about the North Woods, yeah, that's right here. Smack yeah. dab. And yeah. actually, where we live, it's a humongous logging community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, there, there's just logging trucks everywhere, and it's a humongously beneficial business mm-hmm. to the local local area yep. so 27 so is shorts for us northerners yeah isn't that true yeah well in the springtime definitely uh in the fall not so much um yeah it's supposed to get really cold though where next week i think uh the high is going to be zero i don't know where you saw that i didn't see that we talked to the people in oh we were in a store i looked at the weather channel actually not technically oh, the weather was, channel yeah i don't like the weather channel um i like wonderground so yeah so i looked there and i didn't see anything but yeah well okay wrong. the main topic of this uh 
this wonderful live broadcast this afternoon is we're talking about homesteading and how to get started. Yeah. And yes, we're even going to define homesteading, even though it's kind of definitionless. But for our purposes, we've got to Defin- definitionless have a thing. <laughs> Undefessionalized. What? Un- That's not a word. It's undefined. It is not a word. Undefined. Not yes, definable. Yes, it is not undefinable on <laughs> not on yeah whatever so yeah so where are you guys at like what state are you in and how cold is it because i know that there's some people down south they're gonna make everybody jealous right oh now. yeah well marlin it says 78 degrees where they're at and, oh we don't and, even keep the and, house that okay warm. so tracy williams says it's 28 degrees in missouri that's the same temperature as here you know, yeah, I was just saying with yeah. Marlon, we don't even keep the house at 78 degrees. Oh, gosh, no. I'd be cooking. Yeah. I mean, literally. That, that, we're sweating. Yeah. Actually, when, when the, when the sun is out and I've got the wood heat going, um, I actually have to stop putting wood in the fireplace because it can get to 80 degrees in the house. Oh, yeah. You got to be careful. And it's so hot. I, we open the doors and the windows because <laughs> that it's is true. so hot. You know, eighty degrees is just too much. That is one of the so, nice one of the nice things about yeah. heating with wood, people, is that you do have the luxury of not really minding if it's like, you know, your target temperature is sixty eight, then you can have it. If you want right. it to be seventy two, mm-hmm. you can have it. Right. It's it's that's nice. And and hey, people out there who heat with wood um let, let's get a let's get a, a show of hands a what 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 raise the roof heating with wood there's just something about it in the air that goes into you like warmth well it it heats everything yeah like it doesn't just heat the air like propane or electric yeah it heats every piece of furniture every wood every everything in the house and yeah. there's, there's our house has a lot of corners is um, so there's a lot of places to heat, but it just heats everything in the house and just it stays warm for a long time. Like we'll put wood in the wood for wood furnace. Um, 10 o'clock. A couple times a yeah. day. We'll, Not we'll, a big we'll, deal. 10 o'clock at night before we yeah. go to bed. So we I'll fill it up or you'll fill it up. Yep. Whoever gets down there first, we'll fill it up and then that's it. We don't do anything else. Now we do have the propane furnace as a backup but it doesn't usually go on at all yeah yeah only when it gets really really cold it is currently 77 degrees in in hawaii Hawaii. nice nice kayla cool never been to hawaii well the close we've been to a hawaii ish kind of place oh in at disney world polynesian village it's probably nothing like hawaii Hawaii. (laughs) no um you know the weird memory i have about that is that you go into the hotel and it smells like a pool because there's water, water everywhere, everywhere and it's all chlorinated. Right. <laughs> I mean, they, they, I always, I, I loved it. I thought it was great as yeah. a kid. Oh yeah. Um, I, that's funny. He, I've never, yeah, did, we've, we, like I said, we've never been to, to Hawaii. We, the closest we've lived is was from Florida, but that's not even like Hawaii. I don't know. It's we might similar. actually, if you look at a globe, we might be closer now. You have to go over the top, like planes do. I'll bet we are now. You think we're closer to Hawaii than I we do. were in Florida? Yeah, maybe by a uh, hundred miles or so. I'll bet. I'll bet. So <laughs> um, here's the thing, folks. Now we we are going to talk about homesteading, but since the topic of wood heat mm-hmm. came up, um, I, huh, this is this is not an easy thing to talk about. No, not at all. Um, and in, we're not making light of it. We're actually just, you know, it, it came to mind, so I'm going to bring it up. Mm-hmm. Um, our neighbors, they had a chimney fire. Yes. And their home burnt down. and They lost everything. Yeah, everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's just say that they really need help. Mm-hmm. And if you are of the mindset that you don't mind helping folks out like that, mm-hmm. there is a link down in the description below for their GoFundMe um, yeah. uh, page. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, this is the truth, Scout's Honor. We have never, ever, ever plugged somebody's GoFundMe page no. ever before. And the reason why is because then everybody comes to you and says, hey, you have a big platform on YouTube. Why don't you help me with my project? And we're, we're not going to do that. No, so, this is just 
these are our neighbors and yeah. they truly lost everything. Uh, they they didn't lose their lives. Obviously they're yeah. they're The husband and wife are okay. Um, but they lost everything and they didn't have. No, don't go there. Yeah. They lost everything. They lost everything. They lost everything, yeah. including three pets. Yeah. Uh, which I just found out. Yeah. Uh, we that just found today. that out today. And that's heart wrenching. Mm -hmm. And Unfortunately, they got out. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, if you have a buck, you can spare a buck. You'd really help these people out. Yeah. You know, if you got a hundred bucks and you just happen to be more well off and you can help, great. Mm -hmm. If right. you can stroke a thousand dollar check, great. Right. But if you can't, nobody's nobody. Nobody's gonna throw stones. We're not gonna kick you off the no, chat or anything no. like that. It's just, it's just terrible, and and so the link is right. down below. Yeah, so, we're we're this is our community, and we want to help those in our community, and that's right. That's right. Why so we're, that said, we're gonna we're gonna move on now. Mm -hmm. Our our topic today is really self reliance, because the word homesteading it's thrown around for every little thing anymore. Thank you, Black Wolf Prepper. Anyway, saw that, got distracted. <laughs> but the the term is thrown around for everything, and and we're guilty of it. What? Homesteading. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. We're guilty of it because it's in our name of our channel. Uh, but when we came up with the name Big Family Homestead, it made sense to us because we have a big family, and we are learning all of the things that we thought were um, stuff that homesteaders do. Well, little did we know and, and come to find out, it's just how people live. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is not homesteading up here. Mm -hmm. This is life. Yeah. And, and so these things that we've been learning to do for the past six, seven years yeah. are things that are, they would be considered the old ways. Mm-hmm. How you did stuff maybe even during the Depression or stuff that maybe pioneers did. Like, how did you feed your family with nothing? X, Y, Z. Or how did you make butter? <laughs> or how did you grow vegetables without, you know, commercially made fertilizers and things like that? Right. <laughs> You used manure. Le poo poo. Le poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had farm animals, so they used that poo poo and put it in their garden. And Le poo poo. <laughs> I kind of like that. Le poo poo. That sounds like it uh, should be a video title for us. <gasps> oh, Let's no. talk about le poo poo. It makes it sound French Canadian. Less gross. <laughs> le poo poo. It sounds like something you might even <laughs> order in a restaurant. Gross. You know what I'd like? I'd I like, like le poo poo. Le poo -poo. <laughs> okay. El Duque. That sounds more American. I don't know. Anyway, so we wanted to talk about how to get going. But first, mm -hmm. the definition of homesteading for us, anyway, is just learning the skills that we would probably all say are the old ways. Mm -hmm. And implementing them into our life so that we're not so dependent on every little thing right. to run to Walmart, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, in all honesty, if we chose to live a little more simple than we live even right now, mm -hmm. do you th how long do you think we could go right now without having to go to Walmart? Truth. Probably six months. Six months, that's all? Yeah. Man, I'm I'm I guess I'm a little more optimistic. I, I'm, I'm thinking of um Well what stuff were female you female issues? Oh we have how many teenage girls in this house? <laughs> no, I'm not talking about I'm saying like if you had to. No, if you had to, we could go a couple of years, honestly. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be a whole lot of fun, but we could go a couple years. I will. I'll give a caveat on that. I would say we could do it if, mm -hmm. 
if our garden goes well this year. Right. Right. You know, yeah. Darth X spent a year wow. without going to Walmart. That's awesome. You are saluted officially, but did, Darth but X. But did you shop at other stores? Did you? Stay? Yeah, good point. Did That's you shop the at thing. other big We're, box stores? When we say Walmart, we're meaning any box kind stores. of grocery store. Any kind of grocery store. Like Aldi, we love Aldi. We love Aldi. We love our um, Aldi. You know, we've got a couple of local grocery stores here. We're talking about not any grocery shopping. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. 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 So, Camp Patton. He cheated. You need... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, uh, milk is your shortfall. You need a cow or a goat or something like that that you can have that dairy. Um, so sidetrack, Kelly. Yes, we are feeling better. Yes. So thank you for asking. Oh yeah, we're we're bright as rain. Well, I wouldn't say a hundred percent. We're never a hundred percent. Never was ever a hundred percent. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> we live in Wisconsin. <laughs> No. Gotta have a few screws screws loose just for that. <laughs> okay, what was it that that pastor was saying in church today? I don't remember. It was really funny. You made a comment because he said, you know, what something about you know going somewhere where you know God is calling us, calling you, even I'm though like, you don't want to go, even though you don't want to go. I'm like, what you mean, like Wisconsin? <laughs> I didn't want to move here. I had told him I don't want to move here. That was so. the funny thing. When we were in Ohio and we realized we we're going to have to get out because uh, we've got to feed our daughter Grace yeah. some raw milk. Uh, and that meant farm animals. Mm -hmm. So we were going. Yeah. And she just said, I don't care where we go. Just not further north. That's what I said. Exactly what I said. I'm like, I am not moving north. Don't tell God no. I mean, seriously. It makes life Don't difficult. Yeah, yeah. Just, just ask Jonah. All right. Okay. Big. I have to comment on Big Dave Richardson's comment. He said, what about yeast? You can make bread without any yeast. Oh, yeah. You know, it. there's sourdough. I actually have a recipe, and I think it's in our newest cookbook. Sorry, I'm looking up at the sky, trying to scan my brain. Um. And it is a sourdough recipe mm -hmm. that is made with yogurt. The starter yeah. is made with yogurt and flour and milk. And it really does work well. Then I think the final part of the recipe does call for yeast, but you can make it without that. And it's actually not as hard as you think to make no. yeast. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, you know, this is funny. My wife's been telling me I keep saying the word furthermore lately. It's like my pet word. She says it a lot. Do you guys ever you guys ever get a pet word and you use it a bunch? Mm -hmm. I'm like, furthermore, um, a, a lot of the breads and cheeses in, I saw this great documentary on breads and cheeses. It was basically about yeast. Mm -hmm. In Europe, it's because of the, the yeast that is made in the air of that specific region that makes those things taste the way they do. Mm -hmm. And so you can actually make your own yeast. And the, the trick is getting a lot of it. But I mean, think about this, okay? Do you know how do you know how hard cider is made? You guys know, right? Like the easiest way to make hard cider is get your apples <coughs> crushed up, mm -hmm. pressed, so you just have the cider, and then you just leave it out for a while. It That's it. Start doing its own thing. It does its own thing. Mm -hmm. Percolates. Mm -hmm. Then when you got it at the right level of happy, then um, you're done. Well, and then you could keep it going and make vinegar. You can. You Making know, vinegar is actually pretty easy. It's pretty easy. It's you just you just gotta just gotta do it. That's all. So sidetracked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while we're gonna see. Oh, by the way, I did. There was one more sidetrack. Where family? I'm glad God brought you here. First mm -hmm. of all, thank you. But I'm looking at your icon. How many kids you got? Because I can't see how the, the icon's kind of small. Because you guys, it looks like you got a bunch of kids. Maybe even some in our kids' age range. Just saying. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, yeah, peculiar. Okay, common sense. All right, so getting started in what we called Homestead, which four kids. Well, Okay, hello. cool. Um, what we call homestead, most people around here just call, well, this is just how we've lived forever. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so learning those skills, like how do you go from a musician 
who all I do is record music mm -hmm. and be on record deals and publishing deals and and write songs and that kind of stuff to Le Poupou is and, good for and, me and you. And moving lots of Le Poupou. And learning how to bail hay mm -hmm. and learning how to build a barn, uh, which we have done. We did. Yep, we did. Had lots of help. We did have lots we of help. Did. We did. And it, yeah, Wyoming homesteader. Exactly. One step at a time. It's just, how it's just how you eat an elephant. Something, yeah, exactly. One bite at a time. One thing that I have learned since we moved here is, or since we started homesteading, um, is to not jump into everything all at once. Too many things. Don't jump into too many things all at once. Like start with your garden Get that going, then add chickens, get those managed, get those into a good routine, and then add a Something pig else. or a, well, not a pig, chickens. but chicken. No, I said chickens. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, he's not listening to garden. me again. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, uh, add a goat, a couple of goats or, and learn how to milk them and, you know, then maybe move into pigs and you just add things slowly. Don't get so much all at once because you'll get overwhelmed and and you won't be able to manage all of those things if you can't get one going and Tommy's right too just do it get started yeah, just do it and and I would also recommend um adding to what you're furthermore um don't you roll your eyes at me I didn't actually roll my eyes I'm going to uh, attack kiss you here I'm just mm, I'm coming at you <laughs> right like that okay. would ever be a thing okay anyway um what i was gonna say is uh don't try to do something that's super difficult mm -hmm. uh like she's saying too many of those adding up you're gonna get discouraged and want to quit add in some little easier ones like right. things like how to make butter mm -hmm. even if you don't have a cow right. making butter is just as easy as falling off a log. Right. Right. You know? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, and, and Alicia saying, what about city folks? Well, you can still do stuff in the city. Um, find a farmer that's outside the city that you can, um, buy stuff from, you know, trade stuff with, you know, I mean, I know Alicia makes a lot of stuff, you know, on her Etsy store, you know, you could trade stuff. Yeah. Um, there's nothing you can yeah steve you can make sprouts and microgreens you exactly. can live you can live very well mm -hmm. on microgreens yes oh yeah absolutely microgreens are really really good for you um and they're cheap yes and they're easy right and you know if you find a deal on say half a cow can it make jerky dehydrate it you know there are you know what let's back up we're, we're jumping over lots of steps. We are. We are. We are jumping. Like, how about this? Get some physical, tangible information, not just YouTube videos, mm -hmm. because we obviously learned a lot from watching YouTube. That was the main source. But how about pick up a book on dehydrating? Mm -hmm. Pick up a book on canning. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe your first step is a vacuum sealer, okay? Maybe you can just start doing that, flattening things out, vacuum seal and put them in the fridge. Then, you know, or a freezer. freezer yeah. uh, but start small because if, if you don't have a way to store food, mm -hmm. you're just going to get overwhelmed. Right, right. You know, and I would hey, talk about um, <clears throat> how you would start like a longer term food storage pantry. Where's that store we used to go to? Oh, GFS. If you have a Gordon Food Service nearby, mm -hmm. you don't have to have a membership. Nope. It's a restaurant supply store that anybody, it's open to the public. You can go in and buy 50 pound bags of flour, beans, mm -hmm. rice, um, sugars, all kinds of stuff that you can get very inexpensively. That's how we got started. Um, they have spices that you can uh, put in mason jars yep. and uh, vacuum seal those shut so that they stay dry and, or fresh. They, and stay fresh. Um, 
There's even, they even have really good deals on large pieces of meat or ground beef mm -hmm. or you, cause you can count, sorry, you can can, ugh. You can can if you <laughs> want to, you, you can, can leave your friends behind. You can, your friends don't can and if they don't, no, sorry. You can. No friends of mine. You can can. <laughs> I'll shut up now. <laughs> will you? I will. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> You can can ground beef, beef, chicken, pork, uh, with minimal effort. Um, canning ground beef or canning beef and chicken itself literally just takes water and salt, yes. and then the pressure canner, and it's convenient. Oh, so convenient! And you've got you've got instant dinner. I mean, honestly, put it over rice. We've done that many, many, many times. I actually just saw. Bad place for your Bible. <laughs> I just saw, and I'm going to be looking for this recipe, a canned lasagna. What? Yes. Now that's a new one to me. I know. I saw it. It looked so delicious. Really? Yes. It looked really good. It, it's got to just bubble all together. I know, but it looked really good. Okay. Julia. Okay. You're scared of your pressure canner. I get it. I used to be scared of the True. pressure can or two. I was terrified of it. I didn't want to ever do it because you've seen all of those horror meme pictures that you've got the the lid going through the the top of it, and um, it, it it's gonna be okay. It really is. Just, you know, when you're dealing with a... Okay, don't start out with a pressure canner. No, start out with water bath. Do water bath mm -hmm. canning. Learn right. water bath canning. Right. Get Gams, the book. jellies, yeah. What's that book? Ball canning canning book. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. And and then um, the trick now, you know what the trick now is? The big trick with that? Finding the jars and lids. I told you it was in the way. She's a Pete's woman. You're lucky we're live. She just kicked my Bible. I did not kick. I kicked it because it was in the way. <laughs> she didn't ruffle anything. But no, still. I didn't mean to. I didn't know it was there. So, yeah, but get the book. Mm -hmm. The jars and lids are what's hard to find. Well, our Walmart has jars. Liz, lids and rings are what was just like almost impossible to find just a few months ago. Just a few months ago after uh, canning season or during canning season, they flew off the shelf. Um, but if you buy the jars, they come with lids and rings. Yeah. So two quick things. Um, one that's on topic, one that's slightly off talk topic, but I'll keep it short. Mm -hmm. Jeanette is the second time I think she's asked about the worship channel. Oh. Um, I'm doing a worship recording, like a record. But it's not a worship channel. What I have is I do a, ba a, a Bible devotional mm -hmm. uh, that's Monday through Friday on another channel because we want to be respectful mm -hmm. to folks here. We don't, you know, it's it's better to keep things separate. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's called Big Family Devotions. It's 8.30 in the morning, Eastern time, and I do it Monday through Friday. So yeah. tomorrow we're back in First Corinthians. Yes. Yeah. So there we go. Okay. Second topic was uh, how long does canned meat last on the shelf? Every, life every day. Awesome. Okay. Now we are not going to give you the official answer because honestly, it's different for different meats, different pressures, different temperatures, um, what you're really supposed to do and what you can actually do are two different things. So we can only tell you what we do. <laughs> We have had um, some of our canned, I guess you would call it, for lack of a better term, like spaghetti. The um, skyline. Oh, chili. Chilies. It's like a spaghetti chili thing. We yeah. put it over spaghetti it's, news. Yeah, it's our chili. It's our chili. Yeah. We've had it for years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And four it tastes years. just as good as when no we No problem. Made it. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be smart, though. I mean, if, if, the, if, the, if a can is bulging... Throw it away. Don't even, don't, yeah, just throw it away. Throw it away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't even, if you have pigs, don't even feed it to your pigs. No, You'll they'll get them. sick. Yeah. But you got to get your information officially from mm -hmm. somebody who has paid their insurance to tell you how long you can do a thing. Right, right. We're only telling now, you our experience. Okay, the thing is, though, the, um, 
the canning lids right now are being made not here. So um, just, yeah, changed. They've changed. And I'm not going to say where. I mean, you guys probably already know where. Um, but they're they're the company says they only last 18 months after you've canned with it. Yeah. Um, however, look into Tatler lids. Yes. Now here's the thing, <laughs> Tatler lids. I am a super fan of mom is coming it's, around. Yeah. Right. Because what happened with us? Tatler lids and rings are reusable mm -hmm. and they're reusable for years. Now, what happened to us was when we first got into all this stuff, like seven years ago, mm -hmm. I heard this ad on Glenn Beck's radio program for Tatler lids. And he actually had the guy come on uh, who was the owner of the company or the son, the son. And I was like, this is great. This is going to be so perfect. And we bought a bunch of their things. And then since then, they've had, I think, two more iterations getting them better mm -hmm. and perfecting it. Okay. And you've got to follow the instructions on, on the things. But the new ones are pretty much bulletproof. Mm -hmm. In our experience, you may have different experience. But uh, that's 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 where we're at with the Tatler things. I'm, I'm right. trying to win her over because... I would really like to be using the Tatler stuff mm -hmm. daily. Right. And hold on to this the bulletproof stuff, or at least what you think is bulletproof. Right, right. If things got weird. Right, right. So yeah, the the Tatler lids are made here in the United States and they are reusable. Uh, you just have to follow the instructions on how to um how to can with them. Yeah, and we've got some friends who've been using them recently too, mm -hmm. and and they said one of the tricks, you cannot over tighten them. You just barely tighten mm -hmm. them to where it's just shut. Yeah, and with the pressure and the way that the plastic pulls down, that's what makes the seal. Right. Um, it's not like because we do all kinds of water bath stuff, and you and I don't like crank it really no, tight, you, then but you crank it to. down. Right. You know, you crank it down with the Tatler things from it's. You just barely get it yeah. just barely tight enough. But yeah. follow the instructions. Right, right. So food preservation. Let's talk a little bit more about that because that's starting food preservation is a big deal, guys. Mm -hmm. If A lot of folks say, well, I don't have a lot of money, Brad. Well, you can afford some rice. Mm -hmm. Start small. You can afford some beans. Mm -hmm. You can get a thing of rice, geez, for 14 bucks. 50 pound bag? Probably. That's what we were buying. I mean, it depends for. on it depends on your area. Mm -hmm. That's that's up here, so it, it's probably different in every area. Um, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So start with the stuff that's cheap. You know, get get some things on the shelf that you know are not going to go bad. Right. For a long time. I mean, here's the thing, guys. <clears throat> One of the side reasons why mm -hmm. we made or are making this video is. Um, Everybody knows something weird's going on. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you put a D in front of your name or an R in front of your name or an L in front of your name or nothing in front of your name. Everybody knows there's weirdness going on and a lot of what do we do next? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think anybody would ever say, holy smokes, I've got six months of food on hand. Man, that's terrible. I didn't want that. Right. I mean, really? Right. <laughs> I, I, to me, it's like food insurance, you know, I mean, you pay for car insurance and homeowners insurance and life insurance and why not have a few months of food on hand or better yet, like a year. So there's that. Right. Now, how would you suggest to people, um, the garden, now keep in mind too, there are people we know that. That garden way better than us. <laughs> well, well, no, they're apartment dwellers mm -hmm. or city dwellers that only have a limited amount of space. How would you blanket statement tell people, hey, this is how I would get started? Well, if you're in an apartment, um, I would definitely do microgreens because um, that's super easy and super quick. Um, container gardening, like Tommy said, yes, definitely. Um, get some five gallon buckets from Home Depot or even two or three gallon buckets. 
So you're using less dirt. Mm -hmm. uh, get some potting soil. Um, yeah, Miss T, buy your seeds now. You should have bought them last year. But, you know, it's hindsight's 2020. 20, oh, that's funny. I never even thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. Hindsight's 2020. Yeah. Tommy, so worm composting this, is great. Vermicomposting yes. is great. Biochar is another huge one that I Brad would has done. I will talk to you about it, but continue. Yeah. Um, just start small. Um, can't you do a stack garden? Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. Those take a lot of dirt, and, and dirt's not cheap. But you can. Yeah. Um, but some cheaper things, uh, if you did the microgreen route, they could easily do a microgreen stack mm -hmm. like we did with our wheat grass yes. system. Yes. We built, uh, several years ago, we built a wheat grass fodder system for our chickens, goats, mm -hmm. and us. And what we did, you can go and look up our wheat grass video on the channel. You know, it actually's. It's a pretty slick system. Mm -hmm. And what we did is we got a hold of some old uh, donut display trays yeah. from a grocery store that went out of business. Mm -hmm. So they were about two and a half feet. Yeah, about that, yeah. And then probably about... Six to seven inches wide. Eight, yeah. maybe eight. But and yeah. so if you can imagine what we did was we got our seeds going in our jar, like, like you can see in the videos, mm -hmm. and then we would put a, like a little layer on these donut trays and then they would be at an angle one up here, the next down here and so on and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. So all you did was we put it inside a container that was a, uh, like, um, a storage container, yeah, you storage, know, a storage tub. tub. Yeah. And a fish tank, uh, pump. Mm -hmm. So you got water down in the bottom, the fish tank pump pumps the water up to the top of your, it was just a shelving unit. And then the water went bloop, 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 mm -hmm. bloop, 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 bloop. It worked great. And the way we worked it out was, you know, this tray was done. Then that tray was done day, mm -hmm. day, 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 day. It worked great for uh, feeding our animals. And you could you could implement that system on a smaller scale to where it, you're making microgreens for your family every day. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so... If you needed to be in an apartment and the uh, the best way to get that, I mean, there's a lot of power packed nutrition in micro greens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you could feed phew, lots of people. I mean, those trays, you couldn't like our family couldn't eat a tray a day. Oh, no, 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 definitely not. I mean, I mean that would be a massive salad. Oh, yeah, that would be. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I'm just like, no, that's that would be that's a lot. Not, no. That'd be a lot. No. Mm -mm. So, microgreens. If you're if you're in an apartment situation, mm -hmm. bucket gardening mm -hmm. works great. Yep. Uh, you can do a wicking system, which we've got videos on that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not in a uh, an apartment, but let's say you have access to just a little bit of property. Let's say that you've got a backyard that's tiny, like twenty five by twenty five. Something like a row system. Yeah, know? raised beds definitely um, would be the quickest way to do that. And you can get um, manure and... Um, and la dookie. <laughs> la poo-poo. La poo-poo. Um, <laughs> and you can put leaves. You can, Okay, uh, there's another YouTube channel called uh, Self-Sufficient Me. Yes. Uh, he's from Australia, but there's... Easy, super easy ways to fill your raised beds instead of using all topsoil. Uh, he put logs and I mean, big logs in the bottom of his mm -hmm. uh, raised bed. Now he has raised beds that are probably three and a half feet tall. Yep. And he filled it halfway with logs. Mm -hmm. And as they decompose, they add, you know, good matter, you know, good, whatever, whatever it is to the soil. Bio, bio. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Couldn't think of the word. Um, and then he put leaves in there and manure, and then he only added probably six inches of top so of of soil so in, you on the inside. Uh, yep, sawdust. You got to be careful though; it can be too acidic with the sawdust. But just find the right, get a find book right and balance. find the right balance. Right, right. Yep. 
but yeah, th- so that's that's you know you lay your cardboard down, you lay all you lay all your stuff down in your in your raised bed, and it can be simple, you know, pieces of wood. Um, yes, camp patent. It's, it is called Hugo culture. Hugo culture. Yep. Right. Um, and it's. You can, if you do the square foot gardening method, you will be shocked at how much food you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that there's some folks on right now who have mentioned that they Mm -hmm. live in, uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard to build yourself a small, either hoop house out of PVC pipe and some plastic. That way you can extend your growing season. That's huge when you live in a climate like like we're in, which yeah. is not that different than our friends to the north, mm-hmm. uh, but but that can that can buy you extra weeks, like maybe a, a week and a half on the front end of the season and a week and a half on the back end. Of the, those those bugs the, are going after you. The Asian beetles are no, they're in the light, but it just yeah distracted me. Some some wickedly smart, I'm sure loved by everyone person from. Our natural resources department uh, imported Asian beetles, and they are Annoying. everywhere. They Annoying. look like they look identical to ladybugs, mm-hmm. uh, but they bite, mm-hmm. and when they bite, they stink. Well, and when you squish them, they stink. So. I never squish them. Well, no, I don't. Squish I can't them do it. No, but every once in a while, if I'll tell the truth, I, I will flick them. Mm-hmm. If yeah. they're like on my microphone, boom, right. I'll flick them. Right. Uh, someone has said, uh, what's the purpose of mulch? Well, mulch in a, a flower garden helps to uh, keep moisture in. And you can mulch your your um, garden. But um, I, you got to use older mulch. You can't use the newer stuff because of the acidity. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've had friends who have done the, the Back to Eden garden. And they used uh, newer um, mulch and wood chips, and it was they they couldn't grow a garden to save their life. I mean, it was it yeah. was horrible. It just stuff was dying, and it just wouldn't grow, and it was just not good. Now, so. and also, uh, I do not know if this company is still around, but do you remember about five years? No, it had to be seven years ago. There was a company that was trying to get a website off the ground that what they did was they would contact or rather um, tree trimming companies and um, the power line people that would clean the, the, the wood away from power lines. They would end up with massive truckloads of wood chips every day. And so this company was trying to hook up people who had wood chips with people who wanted wood chips and that way they could get like a truckload of them for 20 bucks it it never panned out honestly it's done. it i think because i mean we put in our information for them to call us never got a phone call or an email and i talked to the and, guy who was starting it right um so many other people that when when we did talk about it they're like nobody's contacted us, you know, or anything like that. However, what I was going to say, I didn't know if they were going still, but if you see the wood trimming people, like if they're out Mm -hmm. trimming the highway or whatever, you go over to the guys and say, Hey, you know, if you're not too far away from my house at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. there might be a 24 pack of Apple juice. Something for you <laughs> in it. Right. <laughs> and you might be able to get a massive truckload of wood chips mm-hmm. for whatever. I don't even know what it costs. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it would cost. It can't be 30 bucks. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't. But remember. that would be that would be the Chip best drop. That was what it was called. Hang on. Are they still doing yeah, it? I don't know. It works in the city, not out here in the country. Chip drop. That was the name of the that company. Was it. Yeah. But. If you just go talk to the guys who are trimming the tr- mm-hmm. trimming the trees, yeah, I am sure they'd be more than happy because they've got to get rid of them anyway. Right, and usually they have to pay to get rid of it. Yes, mm-hmm. that's the key. Yeah. They have to pay to go to the dump right. or wherever. Right, and then why wouldn't they rather get you know some delightful, let's say Mountain Dew? There you. Go. That's a good. That's a Mountain good Dew. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Sony Pop. Um, gardening, guys. Here's the other thing about gardening. Here's the dirty little secret, okay? 
everybody thinks, well, I've got my survival seed bank that I heard advertised on XYZ program and I bought it and they're in their little vacuum sealed little cute things. And when, when I need to, I'm going to go get out a garden hoe and rip up the grass and then I'm going to plant a garden and um, then I'll be able to feed my family. Whoa, you could not be more wrong. No, 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 no. Sorry, that that will not happen. That, that just you got there's so it, much information you need to know there's so much you have to do to the soil and le, la kakaduki you need to become friends with it it's le poopoo le poopoo you need you to have, know you have to say it in your mic like this le, le poopoo you get to say, yeah. Sorry. pardon me do you have any <laughs> gray poupon no but i have le poopoo, le poopoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, you okay? Trowel and error. That's I love that queen bean. That's great. That is great. Um, we have okay. How many different gardens have we had? Oh. One in Florida. Ten. One in ten. Cincinnati. We've had ten probably. Easily, and only and one only was like boom. One. Did we really have amazing results? And honestly, honestly, I really think it was the biochar. Okay. Let me talk to you guys a yeah. little bit about biochar because I watched a documentary on um, archaeologists mm -hmm. who were studying uh, the Amazon uh, um, cultures, like the Incas and the, what was the other Mayans. ones? The Mayans. Mm -hmm. And they were puzzled because they couldn't figure out how they had such high population densities in really small city centers when, believe it or not, the soil in the rainforest is actually not that great for producing crops that people eat. There's a lot of rain. Don't get me wrong. Tons of rain. And they were digging into the soil and finding different, you know, discoveries about what they were finding. And the biggest one was charcoal biochar and this is what it is it's basically charcoal chunks that is smashed up and if you look at charcoal if it's really truly carbon if it's carbon mm -hmm. then one square pencil lead size like this big that big they say that if you unfold it because there's so many micro tubes in it that it will make 100 square inches if you unroll the tubes, mm -hmm. okay? So what happens is they will make this carbon and they will inoculate it with le poo poo, a fertilizer of some kind. That, that was a good sound, I think. I like that. So, but they, <laughs> le poo poo. But there's a certain way that you do it. Mm -hmm. And we did it with vermicompost. Mm -hmm. We did it with what is called worm poo -poo. tea. No, it's more than poo poo. <laughs> no, it's not just I poo poo know. anymore. <laughs> it's not poo poo anymore. <laughs> I'll tell you about vermicomposting in a, in a second. second. Yeah, but they would inoculate it with a fertilizer that was live. Millions and millions and millions of living microorganisms that are beneficial to the soil. And what happens is that when they put that, Farva, thank you, when they put that into their soil that they're going to grow with, on average, they were getting over 300 to 400 percent bigger mm -hmm. yields. Yeah. And at first, I just I thought, well, boy, let's try this out. This sounds like a good idea. And I made a bunch of man. I made a bunch of biochar, and it was really easy. Mm -hmm. It was actually not hard at all. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a process called pyrolysis, but it's really not hard. And then I, instead of using a regular poo poo, I decided, you know what? I've been told this worm tea is really really good vermicomposting. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you get your worm castings, which there's probably no better. There's probably no better um, fertilizer than worm castings, except when you activate them and make them come back to life like zombies. It's zombie dookie. What? No, it's just, 
At least in this chill is really crept out today. <laughs> so, okay. I got to stay on track because I could really, I could run with that. Yeah. No, let's not. So there's a process and we have videos on it mm-hmm. on how to make warm tea. But you take, thank you, Farva. Thank you. We will talk about that. Um, and there's a cheap way to do it, by the way. Um, so what we did is we took our worm castings from the worms that we had. had. Mm-hmm. We had one of those cute little worm tower things. And then you take your worm poo-poo and you put it in a paint bag, like a strainer bag. You could use nylons. You could use whatever. But the air and water need to be able to get through it easy without it dumping all over the place. Right. A bucket. Five-gallon bucket. Of purified, not necessarily purified, Water that has been uh, bubbled, like a fish bubbler. So there's no more chlorine in it. For at least 24 hours. Well, you can use well water and not have to do that, right? I would still do it. Okay. You still aerate it. I would still, still do it. it. You want to aerate yeah. it. So you use a fish bubbler yep. and aerate it. And then um, you hang the worm poo-poo, not on, like right in the middle of the water, not to the top, not on the bottom. And you got your fish bubbler going. And then you give it some unsulfured molasses. Mm -hmm. You give it about two or three tablespoons. That's all. And what happens is the beneficial bacteria that's in the worm castings comes to life. And it starts breeding and eating that molasses. And it makes what we call worm tea. Worm tea, then I will inoculate the biochar with the worm tea mm-hmm. for 10 hours, yep. then you got to get it into the ground or else it'll die. Right. And you now I'll shut up. You tell them about our yields. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So we have never since then have had six and a half, seven foot tall tomato plants. Yeah. Never have we had that since we did that. And we could have braced them and gotten them bigger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, The tomatoes that came off of these, and they were, we planted the seeds. They were beefsteak. Were they beefsteaks? I think they were orange. They were orange beefsteak tomatoes, and they were so good. Yep. Two and a half pounds of tomato. Each Each one. Each tomato was two and a half pounds there were so much on and the, and and it wasn't just this massive, you know, nasty tasting woody tomato. It was super super delicious. And um I really th- I miss those tomatoes. Thank you again, so Farva. So this year coming up, we will be doing the biochar Absolutely. and the worm tea again in our raised beds. In our raised beds. Well, and we had raised beds. Yep. In this in the at this particular house. Yep. Um and so we had, you know, four by eight raised beds. You know, they were they were a foot tall. So it wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't super deep. It was only a foot tall. Um, and we just, there was well, the so corn, much. The corn was, in some cases, twice as tall as me. Yeah. Um, we didn't know how to grow corn at that did, time. And we didn't use hybrid corn. We were using no. heirloom corn. Yeah, that's what was crazy. Yeah. Um, The beans were out of control. It was like a forest. It really was. It was crazy. We could not keep up with, you know, with all of the food that was being produced. Thankfully, we had pigs. Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) They ate everything, man. Oh, Oh, my gosh. They love the corn stalks. Now, but one thing I will say that we've never been good at is onions. No, we cannot. I think we're getting them too wet. I don't know what the deal is. We just onions. don't, we don't do onions well. Don't know. No, we've done potatoes, beans, peas, you know, tomatoes, you know, like crazy carrots. We've done really well. Um, wow. Turnips. Yeah, they were huge. Yeah. Uh, what were those other things? Um, I think I'm thinking not the turnips. Rutabagas? No. No, we've never grown rutabagas. We rock the cucumbers. Cucumbers, cucumbers are great. Are and you great. know what? Here, a little tip that's awesome. Works great. Get yourself a cattle panel or a little pig panel and stake it with, with like tent stakes mm-hmm. and make it into an arch. You yeah. bend it because then uh, you can still use the ground underneath it for other stuff, number one. 
that way you're not wasting that space. Right. But the cucumbers come in and they hang down. Yeah. So when you go to harvest it, you just reach in, pop them off, and it's just like that. They grow up the trellis. What? Oh, Common Sense University says, when you guys still lived in Ohio at the meetup, you gave my son tomato plants. He was so proud of his crop that year. He had tomatoes all the way into November that year. What a kind thing to say. Wow. I'm so glad. Honestly, wow. that is really cool. Plum Tree Farm. Are you using seeds or tomato sets? Onion or, uh, sets. Onion sets. Sets. We usually use sets um, because I always... Because we don't know. I forget to plant the onion seeds because we have to plant them really early here. Yeah. Um. So I, I get behind. Like, we should be planting our garden right now. Um, planning, not planting. Planting, planting, not planting, planting. You see, see the snow? <laughs> yeah, there's there's still snow on the ground, and the, we'll still have snow on the ground till months. April, end of April, usually. Yeah. And then um, you got to wait till this it, it literally warms up. Yeah, you can't plant anything here until the beginning of June. And if you if you guys have ever heard of a, a thing called the uh, the Grand Solar Minimum, um. Here's the here's the 10 second version. You know how the earth goes through cycles of weather naturally? Mm -hmm. Well, so does the sun. And scientists, traumatists have figured out that uh, that they're the cycle of solar flares is way down for the next 10 ish years or maybe more. Uh, so we're actually going to get less. um well, frankly, less heat here, but it's not going to really affect uh, the output of crops as much as we're going to have less time on our growing season. Yeah. So instead, we, we might lose two and a half to three weeks, like half on the front end, half on the back end. Well, for people that live in central Wisconsin, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. That's a huge that deal. Makes, that makes your corn go from this tall to that tall. Yeah, I, we don't, we already, we only have about 100 days of growing season here. That's it. That's just a little over three months. Well, that's why you have uh, raised beds. That's why you have raised beds. Um, and there's things that you can do to jumpstart that soil. You can tarp it and, you True. know, get that soil warm. Um and we probably will do something like that this year. We're just not sure. Yeah. So we've got, there's so much still that we have to do before, well, during the winter time. Yeah. And we've been kind of out of commission because we were sick for so long. So. Well, yeah. And, and we moved here. We haven't, we haven't even lived here a year. Oh, right. We haven't moved in. We haven't lived in this house a year yet. And, um, sorry, I got distracted. Don't know if it will work up there where you're at, but David plants his onions in potting soil with a lot of wood wood stove ash. Yeah, huh. that's awesome. We just put a bunch of wood I, wood stove ash in the garden. Yeah, I save all of the ashes from the wood stove and I put them in a big metal trash can. Um, and so then when that's when they're when that can is full, I'll take it and I'll put it in the tractor bucket and go and sprinkle it in the garden. Now. I want to go off topic for just a second because um, Farva has been very kind and, oh, yes. and asked a question and, and, you know, they gave us a little donation. So that, that is also helpful to me remembering uh, how to do a wood or a, a, a carbon filter. Now, if you guys, we have actually videos on this, but it's like the Berkey water filter. Okay. They're expensive. And they're great. They work very well if you keep them clean. Yes. Because they get stinky if you don't wipe out. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the filters. It smells like a fish tank. It does smell like a fish it's tank. It's gross. I am trying to think of the name of that generic. There is, you can, with a sterile food grade bucket mm -hmm. and a generic carbon water filter that you can it's it's right on the tip of my tongue it's a d word i'll think of it while we're going um because we bought we have extras but um they're about this big 
And then you get, what you can do is you can go to the grocery store. They used to give them away for free, the food grade buckets. The icing buckets, The yeah. icing buckets, but they don't now. They charge like a couple bucks, but it's still a great deal. You just drill the hole so it barely fits through, and you, you fix it onto the filter, and that's it. Your Berkey style water filter that is a carbon water filter, um, it's going to cost you, daggone, those filters were not that expensive. Aren't they like 20, 25 bucks? If that? They, I think they were $24 a piece. Them? Oh, a piece? Either a piece or a set. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've looked. We've had well water for the last few years. Dawson? No. No, I don't know what they were called. You know what? If I think about it, I'll I'll, men, I'll mention it in a future video, but it's a D word. Just look up Berkey. Um, Alternative. A water filter clone or Berkey generic, and it'll come up. Yeah. But that's all you got to do. And then instead of hundreds of dollars for 24, 25 bucks, you have the same exact thing. Yeah. yeah. Or if you if you have somebody that can do, you know, something a little more schnazzy, mm -hmm. get yourself a stainless steel can. Okay. You can do that with a cover done. Yeah. But clean it. Yeah. Okay. And you got you to gotta do it weekly. Um, if you let it go, it just gets, it gets, yucky. it gets weird. It get Yeah. And, and like I said, we haven't used ours. We still have ours, but we haven't used it in a long time because, uh, they're, they're Dalton, Dalton, Dalton. That's Dalton. it. Dalton is the name. Um, we haven't used it cause we've had well water and our well water is great. It's fantastic. So, all right. Back to gardening. Yeah. Lewis, Lewis, Lewis. Oh, my friend. Yes, we've thought about getting a greenhouse. Yes. 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 Um, the trick is we have been bouncing from house to house mm -hmm. in such unexpected ways that just when we think, okay, let's get a greenhouse, then some stupid thing happens and we've got to move. Right. We are not moving anymore. Tell them the real kiss of death. What happens when we... When we plant fruit trees. But we've already planted fruit trees. And we're we've still here. Too, and we're still here. And we have no plans on moving. Well, you got to explain now. What? Why fruit trees? Okay, so we would buy a house. And the first thing we would do, sometimes even before moving in, um, we would plant fruit trees. Like lots of fruit trees. 20 fruit trees. Um, and then shortly after, realizing this is not the right place. Or something happens. Or something happens and, you know we can't have livestock there anymore or, you know, job situation. You can't, yeah. Job situation. Or you can't have a homestead where you don't live. There's it's that. Happened. Yeah. It's happened. So, you know, it's, um, the greenhouse is a big project. And well, yes, we did build a barn. That's kind of bigger than a greenhouse. It is. So that's probably going to be sometime in the near future. I'm hoping that we can have yes. a greenhouse. So now Mary's got a great question that is on topic. Mary Carpenter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the steps for planting a garden? Okay. First things first, this one, everybody ignores this. Yes. Everybody ignores mm -hmm. this. Ready? Come on. Come on, Mary. Get closer, a little closer. closer. Ready? What do you eat? Not what you think Can't you'll drop eat. A mic, but, so, <laughs> Not what you think you're going to eat, but what do you actually do you, eat? Right. What do you actually eat? Um, and make a list of those things. You know, not potato chips, mm -hmm. not... You know, cheese crackers. I'm What's talking about garden? fruits, fruits and vegetables. What do you guys like to eat? That's the first step in planting a garden. Then it's soil. Yeah. Getting to know your area and what's in your garden area. Or should you move your garden from here to here because that's too wet. Right. Or that's too sandy. Mm -hmm. So knowing what you want to eat. You just put that in your mind and mm -hmm. set a list over there, and and then 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 you go about the business of saying, okay, well, how can I make pineapple grow here in Wisconsin? 
You can't. No, you can't. That's why I'm saying know what you eat and your soil. Mm -hmm. Because it ain't going to matter if you if you want to grow X, Y, and Z, but you're in southern Texas. Right. You've got to know what's going to actually grow there, and then you combine those two things into one thing. Right. Right. You got you to gotta be super cautious of, like, you know, walk your property. Find out where the best mm -hmm. um, spots are. You don't want it to where – you don't want a spot where it's going to collect a lot of water. Or it's going to uh, be such a slant that if there is a, uh, a huge flash rainstorm, flood or a flash flood, mm -hmm. it just goes, washes mm -hmm. everything away. Um, I don't think the soil is the problem for pineapples. No, they're really not. <laughs> it's the... Uh, it's the 18 months it takes to grow a a pineapple. A pineapple. Just a pineapple. Yeah. yeah. And then they don't even really grow that big. So. Well, and by knowing your soil, mm -hmm. you can make changes. Mm -hmm. You could say, well, all right, I want to eat this, this, and this, mm -hmm. but my soil needs this amendment right. to make that happen. Well, you can do those things. But only to a degree. You can't jump like way, 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 way off the off the reservation because it's not going to help you. Right, right. You know, that's why I was making the exaggeration of the pineapple. Mm -hmm. Because there's some things that you're just going to bang your head on the wall and it's just never going to work anyway. Right. So knowing your soil, knowing what you eat, then many, many, many months before you start reading and watching YouTube videos. However. Well, hold on, though. They have, if they have not started a garden, you're going to need to start amending your ground. Yeah. By scraping off the sod and tilling it in and getting yeah good stuff into it. Yeah. But reading and knowing that's where you're going to know what to do with your soil. Mm -hmm. What's next is what do I do with this? This right. is okay now. All right. Now, now. What kind of garden are you going to have? Are you going to have a square foot garden? Are you going to do traditional row gardening? Mm -hmm. Are you going to do, what is that thing they call when they just, or survival garden where you hide everything out in the woods and then you just know. Oh, Permaculture. Think, no, no, no. It's different. Oh. There's like survival gardens. Oh, where I've not heard that. People okay. are afraid they're going to come get your stuff. So they like, I'll plant this here and then I'll plant this over there. And then they just. Then the animals are going to eat it. There's another thing you got to consider. Yeah, uh, I kind of would like to keep my garden where I can see it. There's another thing to yeah. consider when you're considering where to plant your garden, mm -hmm. what you're going to do with the soil, yep. and then what kind of critters are going to want to eat it. Yeah, right. Because they're hungry too. Yeah. They're hungry too. Now, as you're gaining knowledge, as you're reading books, as you're watching videos, here is the danger. Not everybody on YouTube knows what the heck they're talking about. Even big channels. Even channels that say gardening in the name. You will bang your head on the wall and waste seasons if you don't get your information verified by multiple sources. Yeah. If you're going on YouTube, you've got to be careful. And, and when you're in ignorance land, for example, I'll pick on us. One year, now we weren't out there trying to teach people this, so don't, don't think this. No, we show more of our mistakes than anything. <laughs> we planted a garden and we had all these seeds and we planted them and planted them. And wait a minute, those aren't tomatoes. That was our very first garden. We planted, well, here's our tomatoes, and there's our this, and there's our carrots, and there's our that. Right. And it was like that scene out of Secondhand Lions when they've been working so hard, and they planted everything. They bought all these seeds, and they've been working, working, working. And then, hey, uncle, what'd you plant here? Those are tomatoes. What'd you plant over here? Those are radishes. And then they pull back. What's that? Well, that's corn. And it's all every row corn. is corn because they didn't know the difference between your seeds. Well, and they got they got taken for a ride. Oh yeah. Well, we did that the first year. Mm -hmm. Um I 
we're in Florida and I'm planting this garden. I was all gung ho. I'm planting this garden. I didn't know that you're supposed to start your tomato plants inside, Mm -hmm. you know, and then plant them outside. Well, I'm planting what I think are tomato seeds straight into the garden. And these viney things come up and I'm like, hmm, those don't really look like tomatoes to me. They weren't. They were cucumbers. Mm -hmm. They had been mispackaged. To where they the tomato plant the tomato seeds uh, package actually had cucumber seeds in it, so it was um, yeah, kind of interesting. So, yeah, uh, there was a question and it was a good one. Uh, what are growing zones? Oh. If you Google um, USDA hardiness grow zone or grow zone map, yeah, grow zone map, um, you can look mm-hmm. at your region and find out. When is the best time to plant? When your last frost is? When mm-hmm. your early, you know, when your when your first frost is, so that you don't, you know, put these plants in the ground and they get frost. You know, they they die because mm-hmm. of frost. So you that you can find out what plants what what grows best in your area. What will work? Right, right. Like we can't grow bananas. No way. Uh, we can't grow pineapple. We can't. Um, we can. We can grow apples and peaches, mm-hmm. yes, and mm-hmm. plums, but that's pretty much it. It's really for hard fruit. to grow things here. Yeah. For fruit, Blueberries, yeah. you know, those. Elderberries. Elder, well, that's not really a fruit. That's uh, more of a. Is it? That's, no, it's not a it's fruit. It's a brush. A, a, it's, it, it's, a, it's a health benefit. To, yeah, but it's you know, a bush. Yeah, it's a bush. So I don't know what it would be classified yeah. as, to be honest. Raspberries do really well up here. Um, yeah, the last, Sandy, the last frost is variable. Um, mm-hmm. You just kind of have to have a good guess, I suppose. Um, we are actually, Sandy's in 4B. We're in 3B Yeah. here. So we have a really, um, mm-hmm. really short growing season. So. so then the next step, I would say you're gathering information. Mm-hmm. Then, then buy your seeds. Mm-hmm. And then also get a Clyde's, when you're doing this, when you're gathering your information, get a Clyde's, it's called a Clyde's, uh, it's a growing planner. And what it does is it's a cool sliding chart. They're only a few bucks. And um, it shows when, let me see, as per your own growing zone, when you're supposed to seed what particular plant inside, mm-hmm. then when you're supposed to plant it outside, mm-hmm. then when you're supposed to harvest it. Right. And it's got a calendar right on it. Yep. And it is invaluable. It is. It's a, it's a slide rule thing uh, where you can slide it to where it's your last uh, or your first, but you know, your first frost date. Mm-hmm. And then it tells you when you can grow. I put a link in the, in the chat. They're great. Yeah. Yeah, they are really great. You said seven dollars. I thought I saw five. I would, well, it, anyway, there are a few it doesn't bucks. matter. They're they're very inexpensive. Um, really, really worth the uh, the the money that you spend on them. And, so yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say get two. <laughs> yeah, because you might lose one. Keep one. You know, in, in your. I have a planning book. It's mm-hmm. just notebook paper. I keep I draw out my gardens yes. on um, graph paper, and then I make a list of all the seeds we have and what we're gonna grow. And um, I keep a chart there. Then I keep another one with my seeds when we're outside. So it's I've got it with me all the time. Yeah, and you know what? I I would I'm going to toot her horn. This uh-uh. this three ring binder chart that she has kept year to year. Mm-hmm. It has really, really been very valuable. Yeah. Because what worked last year, why? What didn't work last right. year, why? What did work last year, why? Mm-hmm. What can we do better this year? Mm-hmm. And you've got to rotate your your um yeah. your actual locations mm-hmm. because that one takes more nutrition than that one. Of this kind of thing, and 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 you don't want to deplete your soil. Right. You and also got to give the soil a break. Right, and then this particular thing will um, um, put nutrients back into the soil that this other thing mm-hmm. you know took out, and and you can't you can't. And th- there's another thing. There's companion gardening. 
Oh. Companion gardening is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. So what plants work well together that benefit from each other? Carrots and tomatoes are huge. They they love they love each other. They're in love. They love each other. They really benefit each other. So when you put your tomato plants in, you plant your carrot seeds around the outside of your tomato plants. And you we have gotten great carrots mm -hmm. from planting them next to our, our tomatoes. Um and there, then there's some things that don't, don't like each they other. They don't like each other. They clash. You don't want to put them together. So there's another thing. I don't know where I found that chart, but I must have been online. You know, just companion planting. So it's well. You know, there's also um, there's there's the three sisters mm -hmm. planting method. Mm -hmm. It's a Native American thing, mm -hmm. and it's really cool. We've not done it with success, but we've only tried it once. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is you have some kind of a stalk plant that you've got a stalk, a squash, and a bush plant that are all planted together. The stalk goes up. Oh, no, there's a no, vining. It's a vining. Vining. Yeah, uh, it's like a bean. Yeah. So or then bees. the beans, they use the stalk plant, mm -hmm. like corn, yeah. uh, to as a trellis. And then you have like uh, your pumpkins or squash, and they have big, big leaves that shade out the ground so that no weeds grow up. Right, right. And it's all about timing and how um, how they work together, where they actually just kind of weed themselves. Oh, I'm gonna. Ooh, the focus is off. Watch this. This is gonna be cool. There, ooh, better. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the camera gets confused and thinks yeah. something up there's. Um, in focus when it's not. So there's a million ways to do what you need to do, but you really need to know your area. You need to know what you want. What you like. To planning, eat. record keeping, mm -hmm. and uh, some really thick skin. Yeah. Yeah. Because gardening is not easy. Just like farming mm. is not easy. Um, because you're going to have stuff die. You're going to have an overabundance of this and not enough of that. And one word, deer. Yeah. Deer are a pain. You can have this most beautiful garden and you did great and you did everything right. And then one night, 10 deer come through and decimate everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's... That makes you really want to become a hunter. Yeah, we might be putting some electric around our garden this year. <laughs> there are quite a few mm -hmm. critters around here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and oh, expect yeah. failures. Mm -hmm. Queen bean, I mean, okay. How many farmers do you know say that they have just the most amazing successful year every year in a row? Absolutely none. 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 Zero. No, there's good years, there's bad years. There's You know, it's just... And... You could be doing everything right, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden a storm happens at the wrong time. Right, right. Or you could be doing everything, blah, 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 and then you just have the most rainy season that goes on and on and on. It would just happen mm -hmm. to our folks. Right. And they couldn't get their seeds planted. Right. That happened not this past the growing season, but the year before that. I mean, it was there was so much snow and then so much rain that – Seeds couldn't get planted, and yep. then the harvest couldn't get brought in because the ground was even more wet in the fall. It was it was so, not yeah. it was not pretty. So a lot of guys they left the corn right where it was, yeah. and they just chopped it up for um. What's that word they use? Not fodder. I always get it wrong. I think it's fodder. No, it's not fodder. It's uh, um. When they chop it, they've got it, the hay. It's silage. Silage. Haylage. Haylage is hay that's been chopped up. And stored in a mound or in a silo. And then silage is the corn um, that has been chopped up. Silage. Yeah. 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 But that's what they did. That was, the, they're like, well, you know, we can't use it for anything else. So yeah, might as well feed it to the animals. Right. So I know that was probably a 30 minute. Here's how we would start in gardening. That's yeah. But that's, I mean, it's good to talk through it. And the truth is that. Man, oh man, we know so much more now than we did just a few years ago. Oh, yeah. It's like when we moved here to central Wisconsin, God just went, 
you need to be hanging out with that person and that person can help you. And this person's really smart in this. Mm -hmm. You should be nice and make bread for that person because they're going to be able to help you with this. Oh yeah. And it was just like, we got a condensed college education in how to get something going fast Mm -hmm. just by nature of being around people that have been doing it forever. Right. And we're nice. Mm-hmm. They weren't just like, get away from me. I don't know. Right. They were really welcoming. Um, we were you know, blessed. We were really blessed. We were blessed. Yeah. So, Farva, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad. They're great. Yeah, they are really great. So, I think what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to continue this conversation next Sunday afternoon. Because um, we haven't gotten to a tenth of what I wanted to get to. Really? How do you start in homesteading? Oh, yeah, we didn't. We kind of went into gardening, didn't we? But that's part of it. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. I just think that there's just just so much right. that, you know what? Hours and we're Let's already, yeah. work one more bite off the elephant. Yeah. <laughs> one more bite off the elephant. Yeah. So here's where we're at, guys. Um, we are a family of believers, and we put our faith in, in Jesus. And we, we understand and realize that not everybody does. And we don't want to try to beat anybody over the head with the gospel. Because I don't think that that is the way that, that God wants to communicate with anybody. That said, getting ready to say a prayer and good night. So if that's not your thing, good night now. And, and we're not going to try to force you or sneak something on you. Because I don't think that's cool either. I think that that if you want to talk to God, God's going to talk right back to you in a way that is respectful. He's not going to push himself on you. And so that said, if that's you, hope you stick around, but you've been warned. (laughs) So here we go. Prayer time and good night. All right. So Father God, we thank you so very much for each and every one of these folks here. Lord, I know that there's a lot of people watching that are scratching their head going, why do these people do this? Well, I ask, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them and show them that you are truly loving and kind and that you're like a father who just desperately wants to be with his kids and you are a good father, not like some of the ones that we have seen here on this earth, but you love like cannot even be fathomed. And you show the folks, every one of us, how much you love us tonight. Give us all a big old daddy hug and let us know jesus thank you so much for how you've well made a way for us we appreciate it we're grateful help us to reflect you in truth and not be plastic people but that we really do become your hands and feet and and love on people we thank you so much for well for everything lord it's in jesus name we pray Amen. <laughs> you got to say goodbye. Goodbye. I got to go do some homeschooling plan, homeschool planning. Bye. Have a blessed evening. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> Let me turn the audio off.